I will be speaking in first and third person, uh, just to give you some historical perspective from then and now. I, David Polson, was born in 1930, 1831 in Connecticut. Uh, my parents both died a year apart uh, when I was in my mid-teens. I uh, was befriended by a teamster who was heading out west to the gold rush, California in 1949, and uh, became quite adept at uh, working with animals, loved them. Uh, I actually hit it uh, rich in the gold fields and used my money to buy a pack string. I found out I could make more money uh, providing supplies to the miners. It, it was a more sure thing and, and uh, eventually got wanderlust and headed to, to Nevada with my own pack string and uh, on to Idaho where I stayed with the Nez Perce tribe for a while. I had a beautiful paint horse and uh, the chief really fell in love with that horse and wanted it very badly, but I, did, I didn't want to sell it. He used a strategy that uh, uh, he brought out his young daughter, Mary. Beautiful, long black braids coming on each side of her face, and uh, I was smitten and always <laughs> struck up a trade. Well, that horse probably wore it out in about 10, 15 years, but Mary stuck with me till till my death in 1900. Uh, anyhow, we, uh, we went up to the Bitterroot uh, for a couple years, and then I'd heard about the lush uh, Mission Valley, beautiful Flathead Lake, where the grass was belly high to a tall horse. And so we moved up to, to the foot of the lake, which was, it was then called. Uh, for historical uh, perspective now, uh, if you take Highway 35, like you're driving up to uh, Big Fork or Glacier Park, uh, about three miles out, if you look down towards the lake, you'll see a big blue silo with a corn silo for, for a dairy. That's, uh, that's where, uh, that area is where I, David, uh, built my wife a big house. It was well heated, but she was more comfortable in a teepee most of the time and put a, erected a teepee in the backyard. Uh, I played the fiddle quite well. Uh, I was well liked. They liked me to play for the dances, even played for dances down here in uh, Missoula and the Bitterroot area. Uh, I'd bought Mary an organ, but uh, she, she was very shy and didn't really like to perform. I had to uh, get our mail in our valley, which is about 30 30 some miles from Polson, that was quite a nuisance. And uh, government wouldn't uh, give the foot of the lake a uh, post office until they had an official name. A Baptist Aeneas was a good friend of mine and uh, had the ferry uh, across from, from uh, the town to the west side. And uh, the townsfolk uh, uh, petitioned uh, Baptiste and I to uh, canvas the folks and, and choose a name for the town. I thought it should be named Aeneas because he was such an important figure, well liked. Uh, but the townsfolk and Aeneas uh, said, no, we want to name it Polson. So I accepted that honor. At that time, uh, Polson uh, didn't have a bridge. Let me get back to that a little bit later. Uh, The Blackfeet were mortal enemies to the Salish and Kootenai, and they'd come down through Hellgate Canyon and, and up through the Mission Valley on a raid, killing settlers and, and, uh, and, and uh, stealing children. Uh, and uh, we oftentimes would find out about these raids ahead of time. And so one time I took uh, young George uh, up to the East Hills and hid out, and uh, Mary took our daughter Agnes in a buffalo hide boat to uh, uh, cross the river and uh, hid up on the hills, what's now called Jetty or, or uh, uh, Sunny Slope, until the raiding party had gone through. When she came back, the boat was gone, either stolen or, or went adrift, and so tied Agnes around the back, put her on the back of her uh, shoulders and tied her feet here in front of her chin and swam across the river very hardy uh, woman. Uh, Mary also had a horse named Charlie. When she wanted to go up in the hills berry picking or, or something, she'd uh, 
she'd saddle him up and uh, he was what they call a stump sucker. He would uh, blow, up, blow his belly full of air and so he couldn't get a tight cinch on him. And then after ride him a while, then they'd let their air out and the saddle loosen up. But uh, anyhow, she also had a buggy that she liked to ride around in. Favorite fishing spot was on a big rock out on the Flathead Lake, which the natural pool is what you'll see when, it, when it's that low pool. Her dam uh, raises a natural body of water uh, 10 feet when it's at full pool. All right, uh, 1910, I was gone. First, let me tell you about my problems. I had a severe summer stomach problem and a liver problem. And uh, let me read what, uh, what the uh, December Missoulian had to say. David Polson seriously ill. The well-known farmer from Polson at the foot of Flathead Lake is at the Sisters Hospital here in Missoula uh, in a condition that, uh, uh, that, can't be, that can't yield to medical treatment. And on December uh, 12th, David Polson, one of the best known of the old settlers of Missoula County, which part of uh, Missoula County went up into the Mission Valley, died after a lingering illness with a complication of stomach troubles. And even liver, little, Carter's little liver pills wouldn't solve the problem. Death was not uh, unexpected, for he'd been suffering. And on the tombstone, you'll see uh, there barely uh, I have suffered, Jesus has come for me. And the December 14th, the Missoulian 1900, it's, it's titled, With Pathetic Services, the funeral of the late David Polson was held yesterday at, at the Episcopal Church. Following the services, interment was made at the Valley Cemetery, which I hadn't known this was called, but uh, uh, by, and uh, attended by a large number of sorrowing friends. Now, we still have to cover the bridge, right? Did I cover the bridge? Okay. 1910, the people wanted a bridge. The ferry just couldn't handle all the traffic then. And uh, so the people uh, petitioned for a bridge. B Street was where Highway 93 is now. C Street was a block south where Cove Deli is. Uh, and the people were battling over where the approach should be. One would say, well, if you put it there, I'll, we'll lose out on the traffic. We'll lose out on business. And, and so they had to get the uh, sheriff's office from Flathead County, which we were a part of until 1923 when we became Lake County. Had to get the sheriff's office down to establish law and order. Finally compromised with a Y approach. One on B Street, one on C Street. Uh, I, I kid some of the townsfolk that they haven't changed much, but. Uh, just, just to dig them a little bit. Uh, anyhow, in the when you come in and visit our museum, you'll see on the on the one wall a lot of historic photographs. You'll see a picture of the Y Bridge and an, uh, teepees and an, an encampment within the Y, and that's not photoshopped or or, or staged. So it was a real encampment there. In fact, I uh, as a as a kid. Uh, friend and I would go down at lunch hour from, from a school and find arrowheads down along the river there. Uh, can't do that anymore. But anyhow, that uh, was a good friend of Major uh, Peter Ronan, Indian agent, who was well liked. And uh, so we found this lake uh, out west of uh, Dayton. No name on it. And uh, good fishing there. And the fact I encourage any of you if you haven't visited, uh, what, well, I'll get ahead of myself. Uh, Major Ronan says, you know, it's such a beautiful lake. It reminds me of my wife when I'm up here fishing. I just think of her. What would you think if I named the lake Lake Mary Ronan? And I thought that was a pretty good idea. So now you know some history that's very important for you to know. But more important to go visit Camp Tuffet up there and tell them I sent you. And you could catch some crawdads or good fishing uh, up there and just a real peaceful, nice place to visit.